This is lesson 1-8 on simplifying interval notation. An interval, uh, that's when we talk about an interval, we just mean a, a collection of uh, all values between two fixed numbers. So for example, we might talk about the interval between negative uh, 1 and 10, uh, or between 3 and 17. We're going to take all the numbers between 3 and 17, maybe including 3, maybe including 17. We don't know. We'll, we'll specify that. Uh, instead of using our traditional inequality notation with less than or less than or equal to signs, interval notation allows for a more concise and a, a quicker way to denote the same information when we're talking about intervals. So for example, uh, what we have written here, uh, we read this as open bracket 2 comma 7 closed bracket. All that means is we're taking all the values between 2 and 7 where we include 7 but we do not include 2. When we use a curved bracket or an open bracket that means we're going to take every value up to that number but not actually including it. Uh, a closed bracket or a square bracket, that means that we are going to include that number as well as taking all the values right up to that number. Now we can take two of these intervals and combine them. Uh, two most common ways of combining intervals is going to be through unions and intersections. If we take the union of two intervals, we're going to take all of the values that are in at least one of those intervals. Uh, there are some unions that actually cannot be simplified. We'll, we'll encounter some of those on our, uh, on our problem sheets, um, perhaps even in our, our drill quizzes. Intersections, when we take the intersection of two intervals, that's going to be the collection of all values that are in both of the intervals. Unlike the union, we can always reduce an intersection. So if we encounter an intersection problem, we, we will be able to simplify it in some way. All right, so let's consider this example uh, of simplifying two intervals. So here we have two different uh, operations that we're doing here. We're, we're wanting to take the union and the intersection of these two intervals. Now, generally, our questions will ask us to do, to do one or the other. We won't have to do both for a question. Uh, but here, just kind of for the purposes of illustrating, we're going to look at both of these simultaneously. So the interval 2 to 5 and 3 to 8. So remember, with our interval notation, these closed brackets here, those indicate that we are including these values. So in the first interval, we are including 5. In the second interval, we are including 3 and 8. Whereas this open bracket, that tells us we're taking everything right up to that number, but not actually including it. So in our first interval, for example, we are including values like 2.1, 2.01, all the numbers right up to 2, but not including 2 itself. So an, a nice way to think about these, uh, these intervals is to just draw a number line. So let's draw a number line for uh, each interval here. So on both number lines, I'm going to go ahead and put all four values that we're working with. So 2, 3, 5, and 8, say. 2, 3, 5, and 8. 2, 3, 5, and 8. OK. For our first interval, so right here, this is going to represent our interval from 2 to 5. What I'm going to do is, since we want to take all the values up to 2, but not including 2 itself, I'm going to put an open circle around 2. And since we're wanting to take all the values up to 5, including 5, I'm going to put a closed circle around 5. We want to take every value in between, so I'm now going to shade my interval between 2 and 5. All right. Similarly, with my second interval from 3 to 8, I'm wanting to include 3, so I'm going to put a closed interval there, rather a closed circle there. I'm wanting to include 8, so I'll put a closed circle there. 
Now I will shade every point in between. Okay. So to find the union of these two intervals, the union is going to take every value that's in at least one of these regions. So here, the first value that I see that is in at least one of these regions, or rather my first boundary is two. Two is not actually in either of these intervals, but it is a boundary point for this interval. So my lower bound for the union is going to be two. Again, open interval with two because I don't actually include two, just the values right up to it. And then I go all the way up to eight. Eight is the very last number that's in uh, at least one of the intervals. Notice too, I have no gaps between two and eight. There is no point that kind of gets left out between one of the two intervals. So the union in this case is going to be one nice interval. For the intersection, the intersection is going to be the values that are in both intervals. So I see here the first value that's in both intervals is 3. 3 actually is an element in both intervals. So I'll put a closed bracket for 3. And then the last value that's in both intervals is 5. 5 is in both intervals, so I'll also use a closed bracket for 5. So the union of these two intervals is 2 to 8. Open bracket 2, closed bracket at 8. And the intersection is going to be 3 to 5, closed brackets at 3 and 5. All right, let's consider another example. So now our two intervals are negative 1 to 7, both open, at, both in, uh, both open brackets, and 2 to 7, both closed brackets. So here we actually have three values to worry about. So we'll put in negative 1, 2, and 7. So for our first interval, negative 1 to 7, we're going to put open circles at both of our endpoints and shade all values in between. Again, this represents that we take all of the shaded values, so everything between negative 1 and 7, but not negative 1 and 7 itself. And then for our second interval, 2 to 7 inclusive We'll put close dots at 2 and 7, and once again, shade in between. Okay, so just like before, our union, these are going to be all values that are in at least one of the brackets, or one of the intervals. So looking at our chart here, we see that negative 1 is our first boundary. It's not actually included in either interval. So we're going to use an open bracket at negative 1. And going to the right, looking at the last point, that's in at least one interval. 7 is the boundary of both of them. It's not included in the first interval, but it is included here. So since it's included in at least one interval, we will use a closed bracket here. For the intersection, Remember, we want to include all values that are in both regions. So looking back at our diagram, we see that 2 is the first boundary point that appears for both regions. Furthermore, it is included in both of them. So we will use a closed bracket for 2. Going to the right, the last point that we see in both regions is 7. It's included in the second interval, but not the first. So it's just a boundary point. We don't actually include it. So for that reason, we'll use an open bracket here. One more very quick example of this. Uh, this is going to be a very, very quick problem. Uh, this unfortunately won't always happen, but when it does happen, uh, we, we need to jump on it and be able to get this problem very quickly, very easily. So here are two intervals, negative 1 to 1 and 3 to 5. If we look at these and make the observation that there is no overlap in these two intervals, in other words, there are no values that appear in both intervals, that makes our life very, very easy for us. What this means 
is that the union cannot be simplified further. The union is just the union. There's not anything more we can do for it. So that is our answer right there. The intersection, so in other words, the collection of values that appear in both intervals, well, there's not any. So we're going to use what we call the empty set or the null set. It's this notation here. There are a few other ways to, den to denote it, but this is uh, what I will use and what, we'll, what we will encounter most frequently. The empty set is just as the name states, the empty set is it is the set of nothing. So if you want the set of values that appear in both intervals, it's, it's nothing, nada, there's nothing there. So here the intersection of the two intervals is the empty set, whereas the union is just the union. There is no other way to simplify it. 